what I did was, is I beat the shit out of him with a lightsaber, <laughs> which is like, the, you know, kind of like this. And I, <laughs> I want you to put your hands together. There goes to the neighborhood. And welcome to the stage. Big round of applause. There goes to the neighborhood. All right. Uh, welcome back to the Smoke Screen Podcast, episode 54. 54. 54. And uh, today, <laughs> I'm sorry. We got some true crime. Yes, we True do. crime. It's actually a little bit older. This is something that you at the old house told me to watch, and I never did. Yeah. And uh, so the, I, w- I always want to say the latter. For some reason, there's something that pops in my head instead of the staircase, but the staircase. The staircase. I've got to say, what do you think of my new shirt? I like that shirt. Hey, oh, we're twinning. We're what twinning. is this? What is this? I like this. Man. Yeah, yeah. Quick uh, little, I don't know, shameless self plug. Yeah. We have, uh, if I can pick it up without that I could help. paper. You could You could have. <laughs> he just wanted to watch me struggle over here. My, After we got, beat me, I'm scared to get close. We got books, man. I love it, man. Uh, we got a paperback and a hardcover of the Crimson Gods here. Um, yeah, hold, I, yeah, hold, hold that one. I'll open up the. Uh, I got the first one, by the way. You got he got the very first copy. You got the hardcover here. That's so gorgeous. This in every way. This thing made me cry. You have no <laughs> idea, guys. Because I opened mine up and it said um, some nice things that he wrote there. And then signed it because I told him I always wanted to sign one when it came in. Yeah. But yeah. then if you go back to the acknowledgments at the end, he says some really nice things about me in there. And so I cried when I saw that. And then <laughs> yeah. when I got to the back, I cried again. Right. But I got to say, this is such a good picture of you in the back. Oh, shit. And, uh, yeah. I mean, it's just a picture. It ain't real. Just like Facebook. Yeah. It's all bullshit. Right. It is. <laughs> <laughs> like, you don't have a hat on. I don't even know who you are. I know. I was like, uh, do I do the... The hat. I, I made Camden take fifty or sixty pictures and get the but right one. I can't. I can't tell you enough, man. I'm so <laughs> proud of you. I remember when you put the first sentence down. And, yeah, uh, I mean, it's drew crazy. The map the first time. Yeah, man. I mean, that feels. I need to. I need to pull out all those old because you can't see obviously behind. I got the huge poster here, the twenty four mm-hmm. by thirty six of the cover. And I got a map. That I'm, I got artwork over. You can't see it over here, but the character artwork that Ertach did. And then I have a map. I'm gonna print out really big. And to see all this come to life is just it's pretty surreal. And it's it right now as we record this, it's on it's for uh, uh, for pre order. I think we have ten days left. Ten days and it's live, man. And an audio book will be out like any time. It could be tomorrow or sometime this week. It's coming out. So it'll yeah. be out actually a little oh, before. The audio book. Uh, I'm going to tell you, i got to sneak listen to that, too. <laughs> outstanding. Oh, uh, wow. A gentleman named um, Graham Mack from the UK, from, from England, did it, and he's, he's just fucking outstanding. And he's actually said we we're go- he was going to invite me on his podcast, so that's going to be pretty cool. So I'm looking forward to it and seeing what this thing does. It's right now... The paperback and hardback keep swapping places as the number one new release in the medieval category, but we hadn't quite made it to number one bestseller. We're almost, it's like it goes to seven, then it goes to 40 something and back to 12, and it's just like back and forth. But uh, it's pretty cool, man. Just, I need to get all that stuff, like the original map and some of the handwritten chapters, and put them on a giant frame. I would, you know, no or something. It's just, it's that's two and a half years of like crazy work. Now it's just all there in one actual book. Pretty and cool. You know, you, you learned um, <clears throat> every step along the way of how yeah. to do this. Oh, my God. How to turn what you get on your computer actually into this is way harder than you would think. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm going to do a Skillshare class. I've already got it laid out. I just need to record the videos. But I'm going to do a self-publishing Skillshare class. But the staircase. So this happened, what, 2001? Yeah, early 2000s. And uh, no, she got that? a band aid. Yeah, cheek. we went deep on this one. We really did. So and I finally watched it on Netflix. 13 part documentary, docu series, whatever. Originally, when you watched it, it, was 10 episodes, I believe, and they added three more newer ones that are right. pretty up to date. Okay, yeah, the documentary is from 2004, the original. Right. Yeah. Uh, was it French? It was a French filmmaker that came over and did it. Uh, I think it aired there or something. And then 
Netflix picked it up, and then they added the three newer episodes that kind of updates everything to like 2018, I believe, something like that. So fairly recently. It's it's one of those uh, where you where you watch the whole thing play out, and at the end you're left going, I'm not really yeah, sure. This is way. not this is not one of those where we're like yeah for sure one you know with an opinion. I, I would say just before we even get into it, I'm. 60 40 that he did it. So we'll go through the whole thing. I, would say I think I'm you're about the same, same place. Yeah. Because yeah. it's, there's just, there's stuff that, to, in my mind, gets him off easily that it counters what the state said. And there's other stuff that's just like kind of common sense that you're like, I, I just don't, it's, it, maybe it's improbable, but it's possible. So anyway, right. The deal is, is you had Michael Peterson, right? Mm -hmm. He is the main dude who is, in this documentary, and the defendant, and he apparently one night, and this was in Durham, actually, near us, a yeah. couple hours away from us here in North Carolina, and he finds his wife at the bottom of a staircase, and basically in a pool of blood, blood's everywhere on the walls, and just a gruesome scene, and he called 911, actually twice, right. and reports it, my wife's had an accident, she fell down the stairs. I mean, he he was hysterical in the 911 call. Mm -hmm. um, they replayed it a million times in court. I think he hung up or got disconnected. I think they said he hung up, and then he called, but he did call back. So somebody was there within six or seven minutes, and his son arrived almost at the same time, I yeah. believe. So so he and his wife were uh, well, they were pretty well off. Yeah, he's a writer. He and, was a, a a fictional writer, and she's pretty high up in like a tech company or something. Right, I believe, yep. And I, I think they were talking about her breaking the glass ceiling, and like she's one of the first females to hold the position she held at, at a company like that. So they were they were pretty well off, and they were sitting out by their pool, drinking wine. Yeah, I think, yep. And she was drunk, supposedly, and says she's going to bed, and then. He is. He stayed out by the pool and said, "I'll be up here. I'll be up shortly, or something." And yeah. When he did go in, he found her in that state, laying at the bottom of the staircase, in a pool of blood, huge pool of blood. Yeah, this was yeah, blood everywhere. This was not like a oh, I I cut my I skint my knee type right. of blood. This was <laughs> this was significant blood. And um, so in case you're wondering, um. If, if you're not familiar with it, why he didn't go running in there to her rescue while something was happening. It's loud out there at their pool. Like you hear water running and the pool pump or whatever. Yeah, they have a, uh, there's a fountain. A fountain. There's a fountain because yeah. they actually recreated that and said, you know, could he hear screams? And they played this tape at the staircase exactly where she would have fallen or whatever and then recorded it out there where he would have been sitting. Because he, he kind of he kind of walked through in the first episode like this is what happened that night. We were in here talking we poured some more wine. We walked into the pool as we always do, do. And then last time I saw her, she walked around this corner going in the house. Yeah. Alive, anyway. Now, he seems like normal, calm guy. Not, not, I know when you say that, people are like, <laughs> right. well, what's he supposed to sound like? But, right. I, I don't know. You can kind of get a vibe off of people. And he seems just really unassuming. Um, like, I don't know. Just kind of. He is a he is a, a veteran. You know? Yeah, he was in the Vietnam War, and that's what he wrote about in his novels was he, stories based off Vietnam War stories. But it was fiction, so he was a pretty big name, actually, from my understanding. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like you said, well off. This was in, in Durham, in you know, I wouldn't say a mansion, but a pretty damn big house. Yes, um, pool and all that stuff. And you know, this was two thousand one. I think it took place, I believe. So. Anyway, it it's it it seems like okay, well, there you go, cut and dry, whatever. But the problem is, of course, is the cops come in and as usual with some of these cases in true crime, turns out they didn't treat the crime scene so well anyway. You find exactly. of course that out later. But of course he becomes a suspect. Um not immediately, but he's there, he's the only one that's seen her. There's there's no in, in, um you know, evidence of an intruder at all. Like whatsoever. So you kind of have to be. So I understand that. But then it became like pretty clear that he was the suspect. Yes. And when he says basically, 
she must have fallen down the stairs. And then he assumed this, right? Because he calls 911 and says that. And then even the lady on the phone is like, how many stairs? And he's like, what? I, yeah. I don't know. Right. He's like, I don't know, 10 or 15? And uh, to see that much blood and see these pictures, it's pretty graphic, you know, on the documentary. You're like, no, you can't fall and do that. You might bust your head open. You might break something, but you ain't. Because when I first heard this, I thought, she fell from the top of the stairs. I think everybody pictures that when you hear this. Yeah. She found it. He found his wife at the bottom of the stairs, and then you're thinking she went down the whole damn flight, or 14 flights, it looked like. So turns out she was only two or three stairs up. Yeah. From there, re recreate, you know, I guess trying to figure out the the physics of the crime scene. But when you see it, I yeah. mean, I mean the, it, it's, it's a really unbelievable amount of blood. Smeared everywhere, splashed everywhere, pooled everywhere, all over her right. clothes, um, bottoms of her feet, and so it's like she slipped in her own blood and fell again. And I don't know, man. I, I can I can see pretty quickly how the cops could, you know, like focus on him. All right, but. Mm. We all do get the benefit of the doubt. You know what I mean? Yeah, we're supposed to. Yeah. We're supposed to. And, I mean, from the outside looking in, they had a perfect marriage. They had like a Brady Bunch type marriage. Yeah. Where they both had, had kids uh, from other relationships or marriages, and then they blended together. And they also were raising two kids that, weren't there two two girls that weren't theirs biologically weren't theirs at all. either either yeah. one of them and that's where the little twist comes in is okay you got a regular kind of a true crime documentary did he do it did he not do it here's the evidence type stuff but turns out that it was i think 15 years prior somewhere in there because they were freshmen in, in college the kids at that time the girls mm -hmm. so somewhere around that time frame in germany where they were stationed when he was in the army mm -hmm. Apparently, a best friend of their family. To he was so he's previously married, and the wife's best friend, Elizabeth Ratcliffe, I believe, Rathburn or Ratcliffe, I think it's Ratcliffe, was found at the bottom of a staircase next door. They literally lived next door to him in almost like townhouses on base, I guess. Yeah, I'm not sure it was That's on a base, it but like, look, yeah. looked, looked like to me. She was found at the bottom of stairs, and he wasn't there or anything, didn't live with her, obviously, or whatever. They lived next door, but he didn't find her, but it was, was kind the of a, last person the last person to known to have her. seen her, even though her kids were upstairs asleep. Mm -hmm. So the girls were asleep upstairs. Somebody, they, somebody found her. I think it was the, the housekeeper uh, found her. And, of course, they come in, and uh, they rule that it was an accident because she had had a brain aneurysm, and she was complaining of severe headaches a couple of days before that. Yes. So it was ruled that the autopsy ruled that, and never he was never even a suspect. And so they took her kids and raised them. Yeah, they adopted daughters. her kids. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess she had said, "If something ever happens to me, I want y'all to take care of my kids." So some pre, which, they which is odd. The last name Ratliff. It looks like. Yeah, they do. Yeah. They they okay. which is I always wondered why being because these two daughters were talking about they're on his side all the way the whole way and you I, I wonder why they never changed their name or anything i guess just memory of mom or something but and they called her mom Kathleen not her you know cuz they were 3 or 4 maybe yeah. when she died when their when their biological mother died and so that really does throw a weird twist in it that you know two women who die, you know, in, in an accident. Right. And he's the last person to see either one of them alive. At the bottom of a staircase. Yeah. And the the Kathleen Peterson, his wife, who, who died here in Durham, um, we've told you how bad the crime scene looked. And her injuries were just really bad. They, I mean, like, yeah. they're superficial, but they're horrible. Like, horrible cuts all over her skull. The, yeah, and the back of her, mainly the back of her head, because they did the autopsy and shaved her head and stuff, and horrible wounds. But the key to this is that in every beating death, which is what comes up here, is mm -hmm. what the, the how the state presents That's it. That's what I was getting ready to say. They, oh, yeah. They, they, they were, I was just going to say that they their, their case against him, they said he bludgeoned her to death. Yeah. 
and then tried to cover it up with a stair thing yes. like she fell. But the wounds were not consistent with a bludgeoning death either no. because usually, well, in every case, they brought up 254 cases in court in North Carolina alone. They either had brain injury, broken skull, or both yes. in every single case. Mm -hmm. This did not have any brain injuries or she did not have any broken skull at all. No, no fractures. There was one small fracture in her neck right here of, of cartilage, but it wasn't like a bone and yeah. definitely nothing in her skull. So it's like so many things in this case contradict each other. You don't know what to believe. And I want to point this out. The staircase <clears throat> is, is not like some grand staircase at the entrance mm -hmm. of the house. It's like a, a little offshoot off of the kitchen and it's an yeah. enclosed stair stairwell, you know, with sheetrock on each side. And it turns. Yeah. There's like a few steps up, a little landing, and then, then goes up. Right. And they're wooden, uh, no carpet. So there are a lot of sharp edges there that you could bang yourself on. But there, the, the state's saying that he stood over her and just hacked her. Well, there's no blood splatter on, on the ceiling nothing. or anything. And in that hall, it would be awfully tight to swing something like they 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 were they said originally that they thought it was a blow poke, which I didn't know what a blow poke was. Yeah, I just called it a fire poker. Yeah. But we never knew there was one you could blow into. Yeah, you can blow into it to get the embers hot and uh, poke stuff, the uh, embers around. So um, it just didn't seem feasible. Mm -mm. So Because he even displayed, like in court, he was like, okay, to, to have this happen, first of all, it was a hollow stick. It's, it is metal, but it's hollow. It does have a point on the end for firewood, but he was like, I would have to hit, wipe it off clean, hit, wipe it off clean, because there was never, no no splatter marks. So what we did, all right, <laughs> Chris has a very similar staircase. I here. do, I do. It goes up a couple, turns, and then comes up. Uh, to very the similar. The They're carpeted, but it's pretty close. Other than the carpet, very similar. So to test these theories... I fell down the stairs several times, <laughs> tried to roll down them different ways. You see this. Uh, I, I have a slight injury here. <laughs> right. But then so he while he's whacking me. So while he's laying on the ground, in the position they said, what I did was as I beat the shit out of him with a lightsaber, <laughs> which is like, the, you know, kind of like this. And I, and I mean, it's, this is pretty close. This is pretty close to, to the blow a, poke. A blow poke. It really is actually is. the same size. So we recreated this shit for you guys. Now, you wouldn't believe the amount of blood. No, it's unbelievable from a couple head scratches. And Riddick's down there licking the rest of it up now. And I have to. It's still, I mean, it's dried now. It's been a while. You see, we've been we've been going a while. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> his, his, ah! his jaw was wired shut, and this is the last little, I don't know, last little bit of it's healed up pretty good now. But he's kind of he's kind of anxious around this weird. So <laughs> we we can recreate this shit. But again, on carpet. Uh it soaked it up pretty good though. Yeah. So I still don't know what to believe after no, all that. No, we still don't. I'm still 60-40 that it was a lightsaber. I'm I'm, I'm to... uh anyway. <laughs> Please forgive us. That no. Is... <laughs> so bad. Yeah. So horrible. Um, but no, seriously, like, we talked about the blood last night. We'll yes. get into some of the stuff, but we wa we were watching an MMA match, and we watch MMA. I used to watch it all the time, but we still watch it. Okay, I think you watch it more than me, but, you know, you have these occasional matches where somebody catches an elbow to the head, and they bleed real good. So it's not impossible but it's improbable to, and to my, because what they're saying is basically, okay, they, the state's uh, case was he beat the shit out over the blow poke, but somehow she would have to graze her head instead of like directly, because again, no brain yeah. damage and no bone fractures, but it would it, real bad cuts where you could lift up big slabs of skin mm -hmm. all the way to the bone. But since there was no brain damage or right. skull fractures, she basically just bled to death. Essentially, yeah, that's and what. That's yeah. the pitiful part. Of so it. they, so the defense said that she's going up. She's intoxicated. Two or three flights, or two or three stairs, 
falls backwards, hits her head once to cause one of the injuries, because there's really three main ones. Mm-hmm. There's other scratches and little whatever, but she would then she she's holding her head. That was caused one splatter right there on the wall, and they even showed like the angles and measured things and all this stuff, obviously. Um, I think it was um not the what do you call the, the casing of the the door maybe or something yeah. that was like more and, sharp. And the molding up along yeah, the molding. The side. I mean And then apparently she tried to get up and slipped in her own blood or whatever and fell again or or maybe she hit her I think it was maybe she hit twice and then tried to get up the third time and fell again. Yes. So there was three major falls as far as like injuries. So that was also kind of a weak defense in the sense of what you would imagine it for is. falling three or four feet. And here's the thing. The defense doesn't have to prove how it happened. No. They just have to like <clears throat> what disprove the, the prosecution's theory. Reasonable doubt. Yeah. Put a little bit of doubt in your head about the, the idea that he stood over her with a blow poke, a hollow tube, and somehow caused these injuries to make her bleed like that and all that. Anyway, that's all they have to do. They do not have to prove it, but they offered, you know, their their own version. They're, yeah. And so, I don't know. I'm, <clears throat> I'm still perplexed about it. I can see why it was so hard um, for them to, on either side, put this case together. I yeah, oh, yeah. Can because yeah, yeah. it's still a mystery. It's, it still is a mystery how, how it all happened. I was telling Chris last night, because the defense sounds, it does sound weird that she fell in her own blood, hit herself, you know, fell, hit her head, bled, yeah, got up, fell again, and kept falling and hitting herself in different ways in that staircase. I mean, possible, but and not probable. So I did tell Chris that there's this Forensic Files episode that I've seen where a son um, sneaks to his parents' house. Oh, that's right. Yeah, this one. Takes an axe and hits them, bludgeons them with an axe while they're in bed. And his parents. His his own parents. Crazy man. And then the next day, the dad, they found the dad <laughs> dead in the kitchen floor. And Yeah, not in his bed. No. Turns out after taking that brutal hatcheting to the face and head, he got up out of bed was normal routine, puts his clothes on. They were inside out, but he goes downstairs. He makes a bowl of cereal. He then goes out to get his paper, comes back, realizes that he's locked himself out of his house, <laughs> finds his hide a key under a rock, Right. opens the door, goes in with his paper, and collapses and dies. And the bl- saying, Bleeding the whole time. Yes, blood everywhere. And what they're saying is the some the part of his brain that that handles like involuntary things almost. Right. You know, I guess like breathing. Breathing, yeah. And um and when you have these ingrained routines in you, somehow that part of your brain handles those actions. Right. And so even though he was basically zombified his body still got up and walked around and went through the paces of life. That's what I was going to say. He was essentially a zombie. He had not bled enough to die, and, uh, apparently, but then did after he started moving around yeah. a little bit. And, you know, just so I just wanted to say that there is a, a case of something like that happening before. I just I right. have to throw that out there. Now, just to touch the end of that case, the mom ended up surviving. Massive facial damage and stuff, and um, mm. when she was gone to the, to the hospital, she, I think she wrote her son's name down, and they took that as the son did it. Well, pretty much they proved the son did it, but right. the mom has stood by her son. She changed her story or whatever. And, oh Lord! Yeah, it's so crazy. But but I, I mean, I, I do want to put that out there that people can do that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's it. It's weird because the thing about the case in this particular case was all this stuff is, you know, they had the the, the state presented this thing with the lightsaber, <laughs> you know, and the way, like like James said, it's a, it's a really narrow staircase. He didn't have room the way she was positioned, at least initially, to do anything like really swinging, 
Like, you know what I mean? Otherwise, that would also cause fractures and brain damage. But they brought in this SBI blood mm-hmm. splatter spatter expert, supposedly. Yes. He testif- He actually recreated the staircase in um, some weird plexiglass closing uh, cl- enclosure, and then he did all these experiments and you know basically told the jury how this happened essentially what what really happened with the with the blow poke so that was really damaging obviously the other part that was really damaging is it turns out that Michael Peterson was gay or a, I'm sorry he described himself as bisexual yes. so he would secretly email and chat with some of these uh escorts yes these male escorts, male and escorts. apparently it was a big, kind of a big underground thing on army bases as well. So this is, and he denied this at first, but then later on he said, yes, this has always been a part of me since I was 12 or 14 or whatever it was, and I knew about it, but I was in love with her. She was, and you know, this is what everybody testified to. They were so in love. They were the perfect family. But it shows you that you don't really know people. Right. There, whether you had, well, now he says that she knew about it. Nobody really believes that. I don't believe it either. I, I don't either. Because, I mean, can you love somebody and still cheat and do things like that? I, yes, you can. But if you are you really in love if you're still going out? Was that urge still there? It just shows you that there was part of him, what, to the jury at least, that there was a part of him you did not know about, she did not know about, and her his kids didn't know this. Now, they just took it like, oh, okay, well, Anything else? Yeah. Like it wasn't a big deal. And it's not in the sense of he just didn't want to tell anybody he was bisexual or whatever. Maybe he was still embarrassed. It was 20 years ago. It wasn't mm-hmm. accepted type thing. But it shows you that there was another side to him. Exactly. That's no, and that's all they had to prove. Motive. Yeah. It's, it's to show you that he <clears throat> might not be the guy you think Right. So then they can say, well, hey, maybe that night she found the email. She found porn. It was a lot of pornography mm-hmm. uh, on the computer. She found all this stuff, and she was going to leave him, or she was just devastated or whatever, and that made him say, okay, well, I'll just kill her. Then the problem for him anyway was they let that in, which they tried to motion not to have that stuff in about his homosexuality right. because it, they said it would taint the jury. And I think it really did. Yeah. They also let in the previous woman who he was not charged or, or with murder with or anything. They went and flew to Texas or no, drove to Texas. And this woman 20 years earlier, whatever, 15 years died in Germany. I guess they flew her home and buried her in Texas where she was from. They exhumed her body who had already been ruled by people in Germany to be natural causes, and then she fell from passing out or whatever, Right. exhumed her body and drove it to Durham to the same examiner who examined Kathleen. Yeah. So here it is. They're going back and, and trying to say overrule essentially a, a, a death that was already ruled to be an accident. Well, the same woman determines that it was bludgeoning again. Yeah. So they reopened another case and tried to say it was him and then allowed that in this one, which is a big no-no, uh, actually. I know that from just a little jury I served on one time about previous incidents. You cannot let that in. But the judge ruled it to, to, to be allowed. And it, to me, I was saying, okay, if you want to do that, fine, but why would you not have a local medical examiner in Texas who has nothing to do with anything, doesn't know anybody, Yes, just I agree so what, what's the cause of death? What is your opinion? Yeah, exhumed the, her there in Texas. Yes. Have her examined in Texas and put her back. Because you want to talk about resting in peace? Yeah. She rode in the back of a van, her body, from Texas to, to Durham, and then had to go back and be buried again. I mean, you know, it's just Yeah, it's and pitiful. you're putting his daughters, who have now lost two mothers through that, and then the rest of her family... And plus, their dad's on trial for murder. Right. It's insane. So they, but they stuck with her, him the whole time, and even up to this day, they still. I, I believe the younger daughter, and I, I can't remember everybody's names. I know one was Martha. I think Martha's when I'm thinking about the younger one. She, I think she has some doubts. Well, I saw doubt throughout the documentary. Well, 
Uh, Martha is a Ratliff. Yes. Both Ratliffs. Both Ratliffs. They, they're on his side. Right? They're on his side. Okay, but I think yeah. she. I think she. She said she didn't have doubts, but you could see it in the way she would say things. Is still, she was like, "It's a hard position to be in." You know, oh, because sure. I, I mean, I lost my real my my birth mother, and then I lost mom, and then they both at the bottom of stairs. But I just there's no way Dad did it. It's a hard position to be in. So she had some I can't doubts. Imagine. But the other one was never doubting yes, it at yes. all, and they stuck with him the whole time. There's another daughter that was uh, her actual daughter, Kathleen's mm-hmm. from a previous marriage, who at first didn't believe it either. But then she saw the photos, and immediately was on. The prosecution side. Yeah, I believe that's what happens. I believe that happens yeah. with, with the jury as well. Yep. You start hearing this, and it's like, eh, but when you see, like, when because when they do the autopsy, they shave her head down, mm-hmm. and you see these wounds, it's hard to wrap your head around somebody falling and doing that to themselves. Yeah, yeah, because we've all failed. We've all fallen even downstairs, mm-hmm. and... Yeah, is it possible? Yeah, but it's just not probable for those kind of wounds. Right, if it was a broken neck or something right. like that, now, it if easier to deal with. What makes it crazy, though, is if you had skull fractures and all that stuff like you usually would, then it would be easy. Mm-hmm. But you don't. She doesn't have any of that stuff to make you think he actually beat her with something the way I, they described. I do need to point this out because this is a key part of this case. <laughs> How I mentioned earlier, there's no blood splatter on the ceiling or anything, or high up on the wall. Right, it's all low. There is one problem, like a damning piece of evidence that they harped on. Oh, inside yeah. of Michael Peterson's shorts he was wearing that night, there was a drop of blood that the SBI agent that Chris spoke about right. earlier said was upwards blood splatter from him standing over, over her. her. Yeah. Now, I question whether that was ever there because here's the big thing that came later after right. he was found guilty because they obviously did the appeals. They didn't work out. Oh, hold on. We didn't even say that. He was found guilty. He, yeah, yes, yeah. he was. Mm-hmm. He was at, He was found guilty. And, you know, when you're watching the trial throughout the episodes, you think, I don't think they can find him guilty. And they're even saying, yeah, we at least expect a hung jury yep. within a couple of days because there's no way. He comes back guilty. So he goes through the appeals processes. They don't work out, whatever. Well, shit came out from another case where a guy was um, in North Carolina somewhere, was put in prison for 17 years for killing, I don't know if it was a wife. I can't remember exactly. The point being that the guy, the same guy from the SBI, worked on his case. Turns out... Yes. Ended up being what? Was it doctored? or? It was doctored, and they had left out key. Any, in other words, with this guy, he's got a conclusion, and he's going to test things to find that conclusion and leave out the rest. Right, okay. And that's what started happening. So this comes out, and this allows them to go in and check his records and everything, and turns out that he is a piece of shit. Yeah, he really was. He did these bullshit experiments. Later on, they had this when they had the hearing for a new trial, they brought in all these other actual experts from the FBI and local and everything that are blood splatter or spatter experts. They said all his methods were essentially bullshit. Mm -hmm. Um, He's only test. It's not science there. He's testing for a conclusion instead of seeing what the conclusion is and ends up being that all that bullshit he said was wrong and a lie. So my thing was, okay, Yes, he said, because he tried to stand over and hit something with a sponge, but he had opened his shorts up instead of let, letting it naturally happen. Yep. And they were, and you could saw the video, the SBI agents were cheering, but it's like, you opened your shorts up, and you can't do that. It's got to be a natural movement. But I don't even know if that was even in his shorts, honestly. They still contend it was, so, but how did, did it, was it really there? Did they doctor it? Who knows? So anybody who that SBI agent's, any case he worked on. Yeah, where where the blood splatter evidence was what, a key part Yeah, it was a key it. part of it, right. Like, I think all those people got new trials or got... Yes. Uh, in, in this case, Michael Peterson was released after... He, he was granted years. a new trial and then was released uh, for to under house arrest. Under house yep. arrest, yep. And the other guy I was talking about, he got off. He was exonerated. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, that started the ball yep. rolling. Yeah, it started yeah. the whole ball rolling. So anybody that had touched his... Uh, that he touched was, you know automatically granted new stuff because after he looked into all this stuff he had 
He lied about all kinds of shit. He was never involved in that many cases. Right. He certainly wasn't an expert. Uh, he, he just made up shit and did these weird experiments to suit his agenda, whatever they told him they needed, essentially. Mm -hmm. So there's the other line thread in all these true crime cases, that, at least the ones we've talked about, is dirty cops, man. Right. It's, it, there, it's just a reality. And, 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 and the way I look at it a lot of times is this. Is it kind of going on what you were saying is how he would try to do um, experiments that would prove the conclusion he had already drawn. Right. So I think that's what it is, is this cop takes it, you know, upon himself because he believes with every fiber in his being that this guy's guilty. He yeah. He knows yeah. he's got to doctor this to make it look that way because he wants to get the guy off the street. Fair enough. But you can't do that with no. somebody's life. No. And no. plus... DNA was a thing then, but guess what? They had ordered a DNA test just to make sure it was only their blood on her clothes or their clothes, mm -hmm. and he scratched it off, and they never did it. So by the time the retrial came and all that stuff, they could not test her clothes for other DNA, just to rule out. Because the, 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 the reasoning was, was we know it was him. We can't risk a DNA test in case there's some third party that shows up. And the thing is, is they tainted that place up anyway. Mm -hmm. Now, there is obviously evidence just, just against him too, Michael. I mean, I mean, you had a shoe print on the back of her shorts yeah. from his foot. Mm -hmm. So that means he moved her around. Now, he did later say when he found her, he called 911. He was hysterical. He was trying to lift her head up and put towels under her head because there were smear, smear uh, towel wipes and stuff. Where he And they said that's where he tried to clean it up. I don't believe he tried to clean it up. I believe... That seems to fit there where he may be grabbing towels and trying to put it under her head. Or mm -hmm. I, I don't know, but you can't clean that up and call 911 at the same time. So I don't believe there was any you know, cleanup uh, as far as him actually trying to get rid of evidence or something. And I, I want to say I still stick with like what we started with. I 60-40 believe he did it, right? Yeah, just based off – But. You know, he's just the only one there, and I just don't think that's, like I said, possible, yes, but improbable to fall that way. And I don't, I don't, um, I don't want to seem like I'm trying to convince you, the audience, that he didn't do it, but I want to put, I want to put everything in here that is on my mind. This is a long docuseries, like, yeah, you said. it's 13 hours, yeah. But there, before any of this happened, Michael Peterson would write these editorials in yeah, the paper in, right. in the Dur Raleigh Durham area where he was just bashing, you know, uh, local politicians and the DA's office and things like yeah, that. Yeah, he I mean he was a like I said we were, he was a fiction writer, wrote books, but on the side he was an editorial writer for the paper and he would he said actually he said he didn't do it often, but he did go in on people he went occasionally. On, in on them. Yep. And, and so that he, was in official. They all knew who he was. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so if they had any grudges, right? You know, it, it, it makes it's, you wonder. It's really similar to Stephen Avery. That's what it in that sense with of. making a murder. Which, by the way, they've announced uh, Tiger King two. I'm sorry, that just came out of nowhere. Yes. But I sent you that thing. And I'm so damn. Tiger King two is coming. Um, that was one of our <laughs> funner podcasts. Yes, it was, and I can't wait. But anyway, so very similar in the sense of Stephen Avery, where he had a previous thing. He was, you know, he got off because of DNA. And then the cop, he was owed a lot of money, and they just held this grudge or whatever. But it, again, it's the same in the sense that if he did it, mm -hmm. it wasn't with the lightsaber. That's what I was going to say, too. You're it right. just was not the way the, the evidence was presented by the state. All that was thrown out. when He, he was granted a new trial, and there was not going to be that evidence from the blood mm -hmm. or the Germany stuff at right. all. That was going to be scratched. And later on, the judge in episode 13 is interviewed for just a minute, mm -hmm. or at least they show a minute of it, and he said, yeah, looking back, I mean, that should not have been in there. I, I would have done things differently. He would not have allowed the Germany stuff and uh, the, the homosexual stuff right. and then uh, the, the, the blood testimony from this guy who was not thoroughly vetted. That's right. So he would have easily got off, but ultimately, just to kind of wrap all this up, is he decided, you know what, I'm 75 at the time, the lawyer, by the way, uh, David Rudolph, Yes, he was basically like, look, I can't go through another trial. I'm in Charlotte now. At this time, it was 10 years. Because he served eight years in prison. Yeah, he did. Rudolph was already in Charlotte by then. He kind of quit on him, and he just broke his heart, too, is what he said. Of course, he did have a stroke. 
He ended up coming back at the very end and deciding, you know what, now an offer's on the table for an Alfred plea. So ultimately, it was after they had filed some motions and the defense or the DA, I said, you know, saw they were willing to fight it and realized they didn't really have a case anymore because basically they were under control of the sisters of her of Kathleen who still thought he did. There were two sisters that just thought he was guilty the whole time. Yeah. Um, after they saw the computer stuff and all that. That's what turned air changed everybody's mind was yeah. computer stuff. So it anyway, like everybody pretty much liked him. Yeah, yeah, until until that, yep. right. So anyway, it was like, okay, well we can go to a second trial and you know, you could win, but they could cheat again. They could you know, they have something against you now. They don't want to look bad. They won't drop it because they're under they would have dropped it if it wasn't for them. The family, the mm -hmm. sisters would not let them drop it. Right. Because they really didn't have a case at this point, and it's 15 years later or whatever. And I think the daughter, too. The yeah, one yeah. Daughter. yeah, she and I'm she won. The by the way, she's still getting paid. Civil suit, and he like wrote these books after this, and he's got to pay. It all goes to charity because he's got to pay her restitution. But uh, And Alfred please basically saying there's enough circumstantial evidence here that yeah. I could see how somebody could think I did it, but I didn't do it. It's a guilty I'm plea guilty, without I, being... Pleading yeah, guilty. Right. And so, so that was an option now. And so they decided, and he talked with his family, and it was like, look, I don't want to put y'all through more of this. It could, you know, this trial wouldn't start for another year or two, maybe. It's going to be three or four weeks of going to the courtroom every day, yada, yada, yada. I'm definitely going to have to get a whole new law team. Yeah, yeah because he was, done. yeah, he was done. He was out of money. Mm -hmm. uh, matter of fact, at the end, that David guy was getting pro bono. It was like a hundred bucks an hour from the state to represent him. Yeah. He had gotten another lawyer temporarily while he was gone, but he did come back in the very end to, to just to do this plea stuff. So he took the Alfred plea, which essentially gave him a lesser charge of voluntary manslaughter. And he had already served the time for it. Yeah. So it, it he put an end to it. It stays on his record, which he didn't want to do. And his whole thing was, I'll ha I'll take the plea to end this thing and be done with it for my family and myself. But I will not say I'm guilty in court. If the man was ten years younger, yeah, he would have never done it. He would have never done it. No way. No, yeah. Deal. He wanted to be cleared. I mean, again, we're going off what we saw from mm -hmm. this guy. He could be a sneaky bastard. I mean, we just don't know. But again, I understand that completely. He's 75 at the time. He spent nine years almost in prison. He wants it over, and that allowed him just to be done with it. No more court, no more house arrest and all this stuff. And he has it on his record as manslaughter and not murder. But the sisters come in court, essentially, and try to act like that's a victory of some sort. See, you, you're guilty. You pleaded guilty. Any innocent man would fight this. Not when you're 75. Right. Because he really... Changed in eight years. He did. I mean, he looked like a completely like different person. Watching somebody serve two terms as president. Yes, you yes. saw how He's like, uh, you know, out. the last few president, you know, Bush, Obama, everybody goes in, and eight years later they're gray. Yeah. I mean, it's just crazy. That's what he looked like. He was in bad shape. Not bad, not horrible, but you know, it really, really aged him. It like tripled his age. <laughs> it seems and like. You touched on it earlier. Can somebody? truly love somebody and have this side life where they have this fetish or kink they can't get off their mind and so they do this sneaky stuff. I believe he loved her. Yeah, he yeah, I think so. Times, you know, she's she's the greatest person he'd ever met and all this stuff. And Yeah, soulmates know. and all that. Yeah. And you had all the pictures that really, she really looked happy and this, but you just, you it's know, in every... To picture him over her yeah, her. it is, it is. But at the same time, everybody thinks that, just like on Facebook's bullshit, you know, it's all bullshit. You only see the happy, That's here's me and my point. here's me and my dog and my fiance, and then behind the scenes, everybody's fucking each other. Yeah, I mean, I just, I've seen it too much. You just don't know. So ultimately, we still don't know. No. And I think, like I said, the I'm still... The woman is dead. And the woman is... a horrible death. Horrible either way. Um... Uh, again, is it probable possible that she fell in some weird way, had a huge injury, and then tried to get up and slipped and all that stuff? Sh sure, I just don't see it as being probable. But I, again, I don't. It did not happen with a blow poke. And our test results didn't. No, solve anything. no. James just fuck, got fucked up. Yeah, that was all it was. Like the hell and my carpet's fucking ruined. I mean, <laughs> I mean, the cats had fun yes. for a, for a week. <laughs> 
But oh, uh, I want to say this: was it not weird how they <laughs> kept that stairwell boarded up all that time? Yeah, and with the blood there, yeah, that they could go back there. and measure things, and then to let, march the jury through there and everything. But I will say the I mean, that was the trip. he lived in that house with all that yeah. In there because too. the jury had been in there, but all those years, even up through for I don't know how many years later, it was still bloody. Crazy. But they did bring in, I forgot to even mention that, they, the defense had their own blood guy, and he said it's an accident, yeah. but it just wasn't enough because, again, you can't get the pictures out of your head and you can't get the idea that they were there alone together. There was no intruder. Nobody came in while he was at the pool. And yeah. once that's kind of in your head, it's like it's hard to... It's hard to get it out because it's, nobody, everybody's had the experience of getting hurt or falling and not like that. It's so far fetched, yeah, that they even started thinking of a <laughs> barred owl, yeah, might have flown in and clawed her head up on the way in because it's so. It does look like that though. Yeah. That's the way they look. This looks like a big talon, yeah, just peeled her skin like off. A trident on her on her head almost. And I don't know, man. I hate. I, I hated this thing because there's really no good closure. Yeah, that's that's the key. Is right. There's no like ah, but we found. I mean, there's lots of little uh, tw like I said, twists and turns where the blow poke they found it they found during it. the trial, and it had never been found. Well, then it turns out when he was doing the Alfred plea years and years later after he'd done been to prison, it was found. It was found, and they took pictures of it and put it back. And in the garage. Yeah. <laughs> it was so by the time the that they found it, the defense in his house, it was spider webbed up and there was no blood on it or anything. So because they were originally saying uh the blow poke's missing. I gave everybody in our family one yes, for Christmas. Some one other year. some sister, right? Yeah, and, yep. and and theirs is missing. And these injuries, you know, they're consistent with injuries that him hitting her with that because it, it's hollow, so it wouldn't break her skull, but it would cut her open and all this stuff. Right. But I'm telling you right now, if the man's goal was to murder her, he is a smart guy. He would have thought, I think, of a million different ways than to try to beat her with the blow poke in that narrow yeah. stairwell. And then leave it in the garage, Yeah. which they found it. At the time, and took pictures of it, but it wasn't bloody. No. So the, their whole thing about he got rid of the murder weapons out the window. Mm -hmm. So that was their whole case. So again, did he did he do it? Probably. Did he do it the way they said? Not even close. I'll say this. This is why because when you look at a murder, you always have to look at motive. Yes, that's the first thing. My, I lean towards he did it, is because I heard. I mean, from that, and I and and you know, whenever you watch anything like this, you can't help but read other things and mm -hmm. stuff. Oh so yeah, I don't know where I got this from, whether it was the documentary or this, but he his books weren't selling. He, I mean, you know, he was like a house husband or something. You know? Yeah, Writing almost like tutorials a and shit. But yeah, kind of like the modern stay at home dad, I guess, because books were not. So we know always there's life insurance. And so there was a policy. That's my, true. There was a policy. My personal thoughts, and this is, uh, they entertain this idea. She busted him or he confessed. They had a talk at the pool that night about the yeah. homosexual stuff, right? Yeah, she found something. She's I mean, she. Saying this is over, right? I'm done. You know, yeah, you, you've been lying to me for yeah. all these years or and whatever. Literally going out and meeting guys. This is not just something <clears throat> where you're whacking off at home or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I'm done. And he just knee jerk saw after she walked away, he saw his whole life falling to pieces. He wasn't going to let her go spread this now to the family and all this. He didn't want that to come out. Right. So he attacked her with something. It wasn't a blow poke. No, it was definitely not. And he went, he is a nice guy. Seems and to be. This nice guy killed his wife. That's the way I look at it. Seems to be. I mean, again, but, but I'm still reasonable doubt. So yeah. If I was on the jury. Could I put him away? No. I don't, I don't think I could. I don't think I could either. But you know, then again, when you're going through that and you see all this stuff and you believe this SBI guy, he's mm -hmm. the fucking SBI, right? Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, I could see that too. But yeah, I don't know, man. It's um, it definitely wasn't a blow poke or a lightsaber. In that definitely uh, not. either one. I mean, it was like a slashing thing, and it just. But that don't match either. It didn't match anything. Like nothing works, you know. Nothing fits. Even the blood splatter. You could you could say it was a 
yeah, little nothing fits. That's good it, it. Nothing really does. It really like nothing fits. I'm just sixty forty that he did it, you know, because of all the just of the lack of anything that fits. They were there alone. She's dead. Nobody else was there. No intruder. Something else happened, but it definitely wasn't what they said happened. Exactly. That's just that's, a, that's where I'm at. And there's a lot of other and, stuff we've obviously left out as far as little details that you can see why if you watch the documentary. But if somebody who loved her, like who's not a suspect in this, who who loved her sticks by him, it makes me question. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yes. Because if you love that woman that died that horrible death, if you thought at all that he did this, there's no way right. you could be still like, daddy, daddy, this and that. You know, it would change And you had thing. two sons and two daughters both, and only one of the five kids total from all marriages and whatever. This, like you said, the Partridge family. Yeah. That, Brady Bunch. Yeah, Brady Bunch, which, which <laughs> same thing. That once she saw the photos, she was on the prosecution side, and that was it. The rest of them stuck with him the whole time. I do yeah. think, like I said, that Martha had the younger daughter had some doubts at first, but she clearly stuck him out, stuck out uh, the whole thing with him on his side and whatever. And they, you know, through the course of this thing, they grow up and they're out on their own with their own families. And she's have she's had one of the daughters has a baby now, or both maybe. She one's in California, one's in Colorado, and they've spread out and. I thought just for a second, too, by the way, I want to throw this in here, is once this was all over and then you had that final little interview he did in like episode 13 that we watched, is he's got to feel in some way kind of sad that it's all over. In, in some way, don't I get me wrong. You know I, I know what you're saying. Because it's been such a part of his life defending himself and all his family's close mm-hmm. and they're, going, they're talking together. His brothers are over there all the time. Because his brother, one of his brothers was a lawyer, too, and helped out in the initial trial. Right. I see what you mean. You know what I mean? And then everybody goes their own way. She's out. The kids are in California and Colorado, and the brothers are off having their own families, too. And and now everybody's gone. That one daughter clearly said, he said, did you tell your friends? Oh, yeah. No. No. no, no. no. I'm separating myself from that. Yeah. I'm going to have my own life. I can't blame her. So I bet everybody in their own way is separating themselves. You know, it's been so exhausting for them all. Yep. So now he's going to sit here with this on his record. He can't make any money. Nope. He could probably just draw like minimum Social Security or something that he's allowed to keep. Yeah, because he they didn't even show that part. He moved out of this big house at some point right. and then into a part an apartment and yeah, he had he was dead. They, what was the term they used for when he couldn't no longer afford a lawyer? Indigent. Indigent. Yep. Like that. All that. So that was the whole case. And then his lawyer quit on him, <laughs> you know, for a few for a while anyway. The David guy. So it's it's just a crazy thing. I I I, I if you love true crime, just check it out. Uh, if you want, um, it's. A lot of obviously little stuff we mentioned we didn't mention that makes it even more interesting. We this is obviously a, a bridge version, but uh I don't know, man. I just think you can't get you can't get out of it, but he didn't do it like they said. Right. You got all these experts on both sides and none of those people can really put a clear stamp on it. Yeah. It's no. a confusing case yep. for anybody. It really any is lay person, you know. I'm more inclined to believe the uh I I believe he was um their blood uh, spatter guy, the defenses, the Japanese guy. Me too. Um, I'm more inclined to believe him, but it doesn't explain what actually happened. That's right. It only kind of clears clears him of the blow poke is yeah. what it really does. So who knows, man? Who I, knows? You fell <laughs> with grace. I mean, you did. You. <laughs> it was... <laughs> you can see it. Matrix style. We should have filmed it. Oh. And then and, my shoe. And then I was like, "All right, you ready? <laughs> you gotta quit with this thing." <laughs> all right, all right. Let's get out of here. <laughs> I guess it's we've overdone it. Back. Yeah, hopefully I can edit this motherfucker because the dog barked too much. Oh, he'll be all right. <laughs> they know him. He's a star. All right, episode fifty-four. Yes, sir. In the books. In the books. And we'll let it fade to black.